Not say, not say, come here. Self squad is something. Don't look after dance, man. Yo, you want something? Yeah, man. Self squad is. <laughs> yeah, but don't lock it down. Don't tell her. Guess what? Self squad is. Go buy a peanut from the peanut man. When him I go through in the dance. Welcome to part two of the Jamaican Cheetah on True Island Stories. The people behind us in the line waiting for their pork were livid. A female blurted out, Then Bassey, when you take the whole of that, then when me get, not the whole of this, <laughs> I said grabbing my pants front gesticulatingly. Go on here, Miss Adi, I chucked a chiller about this road here. I hear a little tired of Carol and I cut no dash. I hear a little baby puggle, now nah, I make no splash. <laughs> the whole crowd erupted in laughter. She crucified me to the loud cheers of the crowd. The only comeback I had was, eh, and we alone the poker go sweet. And by the time the next batch jerk, just take you. I'll be a poop, your poop up and everything back at you. George said, Yo, Samo, come on, I love the woman alone. Send him to a nice place. Hmm. Mind she make that put this fella belly and kill you. I doubt me, I tell you. With that, we exited stage left. We got in the car and drove off and headed for George's house, which was the final stop before we headed back to Kingston. The plan was to wait till we reached George's house we would sit and eat our pork. All that went out the window once we sat in the car and that delicious pork fragrance clotted our nose corner. Me say, we mash up the pork wicked. All the steering wheel greasy. Pork paraphernalia scatter all boat in my car. One at the time me ear through the pork vine. Or the pig picnic where she dead left her walk down the whole of St. Thomas with belly woman cutlass and look through it to her with mash up the Hey, to her with deal with them mama wicked. Not even skin we not dash way. All the dog them down at St. Thomas no one see we. No bone no drop her grung. Everything chop chop and swallow. One at a time, me and Damien a plan for put a piece of food together and go back to St. Thomas for jerky and give him an ultimatum. Plato or plomo to come back to Kingston with us and be our top chef in a new restaurant. But all that was just wishful thinking. About five minutes from George's house, George pulled another bottle of roots and swallowed it with a small pill. I heard no evil, and I saw no evil. In my mind, do I was saying to myself, Lord God, George is going to murder the poor woman tonight. And worse, he never get nothing to weep before. So you know, I said that, that, that his highly back brought forward. <laughs> Sitting dead tonight. We finally reached George's house around 7.30 p.m. The plan was to drop off George. Then Damien and I would go hang out at a little bar just down the road from his house and wait on his phone call to go back and pick him up when he was ready. So by the time we reached roughly around... 100 meter from his house, I heard him mutter under his breath. Wait, how far can that I get? Oh, a good little dad friend one. We pulled up behind the car and he exited from the right front passenger side. He then bent down by the window and asked Damien for enemy's remaining share of the fish and pork, then said, Bridging. Oh, no, come in, come in, my wife and my youth. Come in, a man. I replied, You sure? Because you know, say time the power we know. And we don't want to hold you up or nothing. George replied, Bridging, oh, no, come out of the vehicle, come meet my wife, Bridging. I'm too, no. Want me something, mom, to me. 
eh? At least on a family with our brother, and on a family with one another, I don't say nothing bad about them, but still, with that, Damien and I alighted from the vehicle, and we all walked towards his house after we went through the front gate. There were two houses on the premises, one at the front, which was the bigger, much nicer one, and one was at the back of the premises, which was where George and his wife and kid lived. It had gotten a bit dark by that time. And I said to George, Yo, party, you know, I yell up your old man. And he said, No, nah, man. Oh, I'm making a nice and alert, Karen, man. Remember, I surprised me, I surprised her in a bridging. Eh? Cool, man. No, man. I said, All right, brother, I see another word, my boss. Just as we passed the back of George's father's house, about 15 feet from George's house, we heard a woman's voice scream, Lord God, me Jesus, Bubba, take time. Take time with it, Bubba, you kill me. Jesus, please, Bubba, you kill me with a big sit in the wall. Bubba, Bubba, oh, Bubba, sinking down there, Bubba, sinking down there. What? She was answered by a Husky voice, a fool for certain this, eh, girl? A fool for certain this. The female voice answered, Have fear, booba, have fear, booba. The male then answered, Kino, the word for me, eh, girl? Kino, the word for me. Now, can you imagine the level of shock on all three of us faces? Mind you, Damien and I, I had to give George's wife the benefit of the doubt because we never heard her voice before. But the look on George's face gave her up like a five dollar snitch. None of us moved. It's like her ecstatic screams cemented her feet right there where we stood. The bag with the food fell out of George's hand like a dead bird out of the sky. And so did the bag with the rasta roots. Damien and I glanced at each other like, what the hell is going on in John shop? We felt so sorry for George. His knees started shaking. He started falling backwards slowly. He was in shock and was about to faint when I quickly caught him. We took him out the yard and put him in my car to recalibrate his hurt engine. Meanwhile, the screams of ecstasy got louder and louder. All three of us sat in the car like, oh my gosh. George sat in the front passenger seat with his two hands between his legs, just staring into space. Tears started forming in his eyes. Then they erupted and started running down his cheeks. All three of us just sat there in silence. The English language is filled with a gazillion words. Yet Damien and I couldn't come up with a selected few. Yet Damien and I couldn't come up with a selected few to comfort our heartbroken friend. He looked a beaten horse, and we shared in his knife-cutting grief. My mind involuntarily flashed back on the big argument between George and Damien, when Damien tried to warn him about the perils of long-distance relationship, and George threw a hissy fit of rage and almost took Damien's head off. Oh, what tangle web we weave when at first we try to deceive. <laughs> All three of us just sat in my car, just staring like there in the headlights. George just broke out bawling, asking rhetorically, A woman do her. A woman really do her for she deal with me, so. Yo. Biggie that girl do everything. She no want no nothing. Yo, Sama, dear man, when you see how I broke my back at work, eh? just to make them comfortable. Yo, 
Girl, was not every cent me work going to the account and I she angry everything. Yo, woman, wicked you know. Damien responded, A true rasta. A wild and wicked. If you're going to find out a female big and fear. Yo, Damien, I shouted, Yo, go easy, Bridget. Here's a time and a place for everything. Sorry, sorry, my bad, replied Damien. But, but, my vex, I am. Ka, 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 yo, you yeah, hear me right now. I, I go with you going there, you know, go all in my fire, you know. And me you just broke off my cheese star and chicken and tomahawk. And, and then go up and me say, China man, and go just another one early, cause him no go tell me no. He wouldn't dare. Now, boy, they're too bright, Rasta. Yo, yo, I'm a pass piece I pork, then give me to a cool festival. You know, them supposed to tough, but me a kid, a kid, me here, Sam. So, Georgie, I'm going to eat yours. Yo, Damien, I'm to the bed man. So, sorry, my lord. So, so, sorry. Yo, sorry, can't buy soldier, Larry. I replied. Judge was just there hyperventilating. <laughs> Trying to make sense of what was transpiring. Judge said, Yo, Samo, you know, say, my old lady had a file for you. You know, say, between me, I take me take a. Yo, I take me take a turn her in a smaddy, you know, up on the gully bank, she live in a little board up tabernacle, you know. I sleep on cardboard. My lord, I grung me go take her off, I put her up on queen size bed, you know. I better me left her to the bank, runs them and the cock coach them. Jesus, God, look over my father, what I'm about to do, take her. So, you know, on the first day, the man see him sweet crossing her. Yeah. For the longest while, a beer back friends me that for jump in there in the summer. Eh, hey, believe me. Me couldn't bring her through the front gate and make him see her have a problem. And when she get pregnant, he does she in. I suck him dog, him start softening up. And I suck him in Mexico and live with me. I even know still better, I just, I am boy. I want to tell you something too, bigger joke than that. Not even my mother, that was a dream. Not even my mother like that. I just told the youth why she had filed for you, I understand. Why me, lad? Damien then said, Why you that that when you try to turn this towel in a table cloth, you know? Yo, Damien, I replied. But Damien had no filter. He was just being himself. Damien then said, My lord, you're good still, you know? You me no know how you do it, but me no no take that, you know? You if I me me pan, me cut this and this shot, my yaya start swing. And when me done in a dark, me just catch the tabernacle of fire and burn it down to ashes with the two of them in there, no. Oh, and you see cool the left back out of them body on the board. Me just put on a pattern and call in Cobra my killy killy them. For even some catty dumpling and two dirty galley that cheese pan a baby she wash it down. Then when we done we gonna knock two bones cause smaddy must get a beer foot six and me no one no me. Cause me put you all a yai de me na da me no ax any me sa chin dog I factory. Yo dear me hell was a boy a idiot I swear <laughs> I said to him. I barely finished my sentence when George got up out of my vehicle and ran towards his house. He jumped over the gate, running towards the back with Damien, and I ran right behind him in pursuit. 
he went straight to the back of his house. By this time, the noise in his house had subsided, but it was still a little darkish. George stealthily navigated his way in the back of the yard till he reached the back door. I then saw him bend down right by the back of his door, turn on his phone flashlight and started looking for something. It wasn't long before I saw him resurfaced with an object resembling a half a lass. Damien saw that and immediately peeled off his three-star ratchet. I had a lice of fire and pistol in my waist. I put my hand on the handle, but did not remove it from its old stuff for obvious reasons. George used his keys and pulled the back door. Just before it opened, the sexual scream started again. Damien and I looked at each other like, yo, he made the real Joe grind. I the real Bonaman this. Him must be seen and freed for. All we heard you scream repeatedly was, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, booba, don't stop, don't stop, booba, don't stop. George was tiptoeing and was some ways ahead of us in the kitchen, heading towards the living room and the bedroom. All we heard was, Whoa, don't stop, don't stop. Damien then whispered, Why, it look like Smarty Hot for a crash. It no look like no breaks there, not a bread of the machine, man. By the time me if you tell Damien, shut up. George made one big lounge at the room door and kicked it in with such vengeance it fell in the room. Landing on the back of the man who was on top of his wife, butt naked, mashing out her potato chips. Hold on. <laughs> to add insult to injury, there was another man standing at the side of the bed, visibly naked. She was giving him Felicia. Same time, Damien ball out. Two power one on murder. And immediately attacked the guy with his ratchet. And stabbed after him twice. The guy was frightened out of his life. Damien cut off him. But tripped and fell over a sack by the bedside. The dude then jumped up on the bed and was begging Damien, no kill me, no kill me. But Damien was having none of that. He recovered quickly and cut after the dude's face. The dude tried to block it and the knife struck his hand, opening it immediately. Blood was gushing out of his right hand. Damien swung the knife again, this time cutting the dude on his chest. George was still at the entrance on top of the door with the man underneath the door. His wife was screaming, murder, murder. George swung his machete under the door while he and I held it on top of the boner man. George swung the machete again and it caught the dude in his head. Blood started gushing heavily. I still didn't take out my gun because I knew that I could send the confrontation down a more dangerous spot. The room was partially dark still, but the street light reflected through the half opened window in George's room. George's wife finally got up and made a dash for the door. When I moved to help George, man under the man under the door, George ball out, Elico dirty stinking girl, you think you get your eh, girl? A guy murder your nasty bumbo, eh, hey, girl? Oh, George, don't kill me. Remember you picked me up in belly, oh, God, police, police, somebody call the police. George was cross, angry. He flung the half a lass at her and she ducked. The tip of the blade caught her right above her eye, immediately opening a wound. She held her face screaming, Why me I? Why me I? Me I, George, go you come blind me, me I, me I. George in care, he was blood driven by the hurt and rage. Meanwhile, Damien and the other bonner man were engaged in a full one-on-one -on, -one on the bed. 
The dude managed to grab a figurine off the top of the dresser and flung it at Damien, striking him in his head, cracking his skull. He too was now gushing blood. Damien felt the blood in his eyes and shouted out, Fosse! Oh, you do? You're just dead! Hey boy, give me your heart, make me punch you, hey boy! Bring your neck home, make me tab tabby tab! It was total chaos in that bedroom. Damien and Joe Grind number two was fighting viciously in one corner of the room. Blood leaking from both men like two bisons freshly mauled by carnivorous crocs on the hot banks of the River Nile. Meanwhile, I was struggling with Joe Grind number one, who was still under the falling door trying his best to get up. George had abandoned me in hungry pursuit of his wife, Karen, who was trying her best to escape by jumping off the side of the bed, then trying to go to the door which he was facing. And that door was at the front of the bed foot. Karen realized if she did not run through that door, she would be probably carried through it, not breathing. So she decided to take her chances and made one big charge like a mad bull, bleeding and everything. Judge sprung off the bed and grabbed her. And they both fell on the ground. She tried to scramble to her feet, but Judge held her ankles and pulled her back down. She turned around, sitting on her butt. And it was as if she decided, I'm done running. She started kicking George in his face with both feet as hard as she could. He was trying to block the blows. George was now on the defensive. She fell cornered like a cat. And the only way out was to fight. Her foot caught George in his mouth, head, shoulders, everywhere. She managed to get on her feet and instead of running to the door, she attacked George head on. While he was trying to get up, she scratched him in his face with her long fingernails. She held his head and gave him one strong kick underneath him chin as he tried to get up. I saw his eyes roll back in his head. He fell backward, hitting his head back on the windowsill, splitting it. She reached for the machete that was on the ground and went over him to mince him like meat. That's when I pull out my gun. And bus around, pluck up! That froze everyone in their tracks. It was like a scene from Spartacus, only this was real life. I yell, nobody no blood clot move. Anything move dead as God live it. Damien and his opponent was over in one corner of the room bleeding. George and his wife was near the door. They too were bleeding. The bare mattress was soaked with blood. I was the only one in the room with my DNA unspilled. The dude under the bed was finally getting to his feet, holding his head and face. At this point, I didn't trust anybody, so I reached by the door and I flipped the light switch on when I heard George shouted out, Blood clot, Dada! The man under the door was George's father. With not a single thread of clothes on, on his person. George's jaws dropped, his mouth wide open. He was searching for words, but his voice box was empty. Damien's coveted tree star ratchet fell from his hand and stuck him on his big toe, but he did not feel a thing. His mind was too deeply submerged on the ghastly discovery at hand. For a brief moment, the room fell eerily silent, and only the fat croc lizard and the big batty mosquitoes buzzing around were the only sound that engulfed the blood-splattered dwelling. A feast for the mosquitoes, I'm sure, or perhaps they prefer nutrients hotly microwave from our bodies and they prefer doing their own dirty work. No sloppy seconds that laid cold on the ground or in no soak sheets. 
Damien and I were shocked as all get out. So can you imagine our dear friend, George, what he was going through? I mean, to find out that your wife, who you love so much, who bore you a child, plus one is on the way, a woman you fought against all odds to be with, to give a proper home to, to take her off the miserable, cantankerous, putrid smelling gully banks, where human and dog feces, dead animals, sanitary wastes floats over in her yard when there's heavy rain. Judge save her from that. She lived a life of uncertainty where she did not know who or when the next man was going to beat down her door, demanding and achieving her fleshy interior. A life of she knew not from whence cometh her next meal. Judge took her from the serve where you want. Just me two pound of flour and pound of chicken. And she would beat her back to indicate to the shopkeeper that it was chicken back she wanted because the shop was crowded and she felt embarrassed to ask for a chicken back in the crowd. That was a Jamaican style. George took her from a life of poverty and desolation. He was going to give her an opportunity to live in America, which was her greatest wish. But she could not escape her true nature. Or maybe, just maybe, George was unable to appease her unsatiable appetite for carnal indulgence. Maybe he had a paucity in the size department, an insufficiency in his stamina abilities maybe. Who knows? But all we know, something led her to this egregious act of deception. Once George found out it was his own dad under the door, his own dad who had given him life, the man who he loved and idolized all his life was the same man who might as well just put a bullet in his head because he had just killed him. He has just robbed him of everything he held there on both sides of the fence. This fence to George was unmendable. George was on his knees with his head held down, crying. He had no more fight in him. Everybody in the room was pretty much done by that one word, Dada. I saw blue siren lights flashing outside like somebody had called the police. I put my gun back in my waist. The police came in and I immediately declared my license firearm to them. They secured the crime scene and rendered medical assistance as best they could. They took us to the hospital and then asked, who wanted to press charges against who? Nobody pressed, not a single charge. Damien and I left that Tuesday morning about 3 a.m. back to Kingston. It was an eventful evening and night and morning. George, he never came back to work till about a month after that incident. And he told us a pretty interesting story of what happened that night and after that night, which is another story for another time on True Island Stories. We have come to the conclusion of part two of the Jamaican Cheetah on True Island Stories. Please like, share, and subscribe, and don't forget to press the notification bell for more stories, and leave a comment if you wanna hear what happened in part three. Should there be a part three, leave it in the comment section.